military, we're going to get everything started right on time, or as my wife will tell you, like I start everything right on time. Father's not here only in, simply in the, simply, excuse me for that, only in the capacity of being our priest today to help us with our invocation. He also has two of the banners that you'll see on the walls over there. So thanks, Father, for all your support. Thank you. I didn't realize I was going to be up here this quick. How, how short do you want this? A lot of sinners out there, Father. No. Oh, well, you're standing by one of them. Not you, me. Uh, what a great honor and privilege uh, for all of us in this town of Hadley. And I want to especially thank the Banner Committee, so to Pam and to Jerry and, uh, and to all of the other ones. Are they all here? Okay. I, I may take some of his gusto, because he didn't tell me how long I have, what to say, or what to do, so uh, I'm just going to depend upon the Holy Spirit. And how appropriate today is the Feast of Pentecost. So this is the day that the Holy Spirit comes down upon us, and, and truly, what a wonderful spirit we have here in Hadley uh, to do this in honor of all of our veterans. You know, when I drove up and I saw so many people here, and then, of course, when I saw the banners, and of course, I have two of my father and one of my uncle, Ed, who owned the Hadley Garden Center, and I saw all the banners of the people that I knew. You know, I'm a native son of Hadley. I grew up here on the East Street, and, of course, for many years, I was educated here, lived here, and I did work. I worked on a farm, because people think I was always a priest. No. <laughs> that came later on. And that was when no one would date me. <laughs> did you say I could tell jokes? Yes. Oh, okay. They gotta have some humor. Today's a beautiful day. So anyway, uh, just to thank you for the honor. I'm gonna ask, uh, and please, it might be repetitious, so. Mr. Stanley Phil, I think he's the oldest resident here in the community. Uh, Stanley, where are you? Please stand. Can you make 103? Not yet. Thank you for coming up. So to the older generation, including myself, thank you very much because you are a wonderful generation of this community here in Hadley. Uh, growing up in Hadley, as you know, it was an honor and privilege because, again, I had many wonderful, wonderful examples, again, in my life, and I chose to do what I did because God called me. I did serve in the military, and I apologize for that. It was for no other reason. Uh, my, my father and my family and all these banners and all of you that are veterans know how important this service is. Uh, uh, however, God called me for another service, and that was to serve the church. Uh, before I uh, begin, uh, a lot of young people here, and graduation, uh, I told you it was going to be long. Uh, if you need a drink, go ahead. Uh, anyway, oh, am I on video? Shame. Uh, how many uh, uh, graduations are coming up? How many graduated already this year? So just stand up for a second. Any big graduate? Okay, uh, how about the seniors that are going to graduate May 31st from Hopkins Academy? Can you stand up? Come on. Stand up. And we're on. These are the future generations, the future generations of all of us. Okay, all of our youth, please stand up. Please stand up. Give them a round of applause because. And, and, and for you young people, you know, maybe one day you will be called uh, to serve our country in the military. So thank you for all that you do. Now, I'm going to have all the children stand up again, please. And uh, once graduating, let me have all the youth stand up. Oh, thank you. Okay, before I do offer the prayer, and you thought I was all done, I think we should begin by honoring God in our country. So let us all join together, but I want the youth to help me sing because I don't have a good voice right now. Let's begin by singing God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love, stand beside her. Through the night with 
dedication of these wonderful banners in honor of those that gave service to our country. We honor the true heroes of our families, community, and the world. The brave men and women who chose to stand for something greater than themselves, celebrating and remembering their ultimate sacrifice they paid. For their courage, sacrifice, and commitment to our country. We honor all of our veterans, for disabled veterans who carry the scars of war, to all the wounded soldiers we pray and continue to support them, and to all of you as a continued inspiration to this great town of Hadley. And so as we come together in honor and blessing of these banners, we ask that we always remember them as they are etched forever in our hearts. And may God bless our town of Hadley, to bless our country of America, and to bless the whole world. And in conclusion, I share with you the three Fs. Faith, family, and freedom. That's the price that we pay for freedom. Faith, family, and freedom. God bless you. And obviously, that's all the time we have today. Thank you, Father. <laughs> At this time, I'd like the American Legion to present the colors to us. At this time, I'd like to call up some of our very special friends. Annabelle Sewells, Megan Dragon, Abby Winter, and Megan Regish to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Come on up here, ladies. You're all brownies for us, and thank you for joining us here today.
Okay, we're having a little technical difficulty with that. If you could uh, please be seated, and if you could present the the, the colors. Uh, I'd like to thank State Rep. Dan Carey for joining us today. Dan, thank you very much. And from the select board, Jane Nevin Smith, thank you for joining us. We know you guys are very busy and appreciate you taking time in your days for this. <laughs> About eight months ago, Pam Hague went, went to the select board with an idea. Her idea was to propose that Hadley put banners up of Hadley veterans for our great Memorial Day parade. You can see, you see Pam's mother-in-law was Aggie Bonash. And any of you who ever knew anything about the parade knew that Aunt Annie took the parade extremely seriously and never missed an opportunity to honor the vets. In that spirit, Pam thought we should honor her mother-in-law and in fact all Hadley vets. So she brought it to the select board. Well, the select board thought it was a pretty good idea, and thus the Hadley Banner Committee was created. Let me just take a minute to introduce our members. Joyce Chungalo. <laughs> From the American Legion, Mr. Don Schaubacher. <laughs> and he may not be from Hadley, he may be from Lenox but he never missed a meeting. And if he wasn't there, he had Dan, who was with him today, to be part of our committee. And we were honored to have Steve drive in, Steve Connor drive in from Lennox. He's a veteran. <laughs> that tandem duo from the North Hadley Sugar Shack who's doing all the cooking today, Joe Boysworth and Shelly Boysworth. <laughs> Mr. Richard Coach. Myself and the previously mentioned Pam Hank. Pam Trivel. Once a committee was formed, its mission seemed pretty simple and straightforward. Let's devise a program and get some banners up. The easy part was done, we talked about it. <laughs> like everything else, the devil's in the details. What banners, how big, where should we put them? How do we inform the citizens of Hadley, etc., etc., etc. While many meetings were held and eventually the deals were the details were hammered out. One e easy decision was that our Gold Star veterans and Centurions would have banners at no charge. In addition to these banners being at no charge, we decided to put their banners up and down Route 9 from the American Legion to uh, Hopkins Academy, where they would get the greatest amount of exposure. We didn't ask for a budget when we were putting this all together, so the next thing we needed to think about was getting some money. But don't worry, with very little effort, the generosity of the folks of the town of Hadley came out, and within a short period of time, we had more than enough for the banners. We were able to buy a couple hot dogs for today and, and rent the hall here as well. So we really appreciate that. And we have a banner over here, and the banner has some of the names of the folks that, that helped us out with the money, and we really appreciate that. Today we're very proud to announce that we have 82 banners going up. In addition to Route 9, the banners will be on West Street, Middle Street, East Street, and some in North Hadley sprinkled along the way. 
In addition, um, I, when I wrote this, we had five families that were providing us with information so that we could get more banners next year. I think we're upwards of 10 now as far as that. So this is, it's taking off and that one of the ideas that we had with having everybody here today was hoping that we could get more families involved. So thank you. With any, out any further ado, I'd like to ask Dan Nye and Steve Connor to come up and present some very special awards. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming. Poor Pam, she was uh, so afraid nobody was gonna show. <laughs> Wrong. It's great to see everybody here, and it's a great day to have this happen. Um, in conjunction with it, since Memorial Day is um, in here in Hadley is kind of chaotic, and you have the parade and all, but there's not really a quiet moment. And we wanted to make sure that these families of the fallen soldiers had a moment for us to say thank you to them. And we're doing it through what Massachusetts calls the Medal of Liberty. And the Massachusetts Medal of Liberty, created in 2009, is awarded to Massachusetts service men and women who have been killed in action, died as a result of wounds received in action, or died in service while in a designated combat area in the line of duty. It is bequeathed on behalf of the Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and Commander-in-Chief of the Commonwealth. The medal, designed by Sergeant Christopher W. Adams, is heart-shaped to symbolize the Purple Heart and is attached to a purple ribbon with a black border representing mourning. The center of the medal bears a gold star symbolizing Gold Star Mothers Club. At the top center of the medal, is the coat of arms of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and on the rear side is the recipient's branch of service and name with the words, in honored memory, engraved above, and service and sacrifice below. As you can see, these are the folks from Hadley that meet that criteria, and today we're fortunate to have four families here to accept the medals that we have gotten from the state of Massachusetts, including a certificate that has been signed by the governor and did the job <coughs> for well. yeah, the, the adjutant general, uh, General Gary Keefe, who by the way, was right over there in Northampton, has signed all of them. Our first recipient, um, is Ensign Edward Zalit. Zayla. You might get it wrong. Um, from Elmwood Street, uh, 1923 to 1943, at the age of 20. Just think about that, folks. We were talking, the father brought up young people. Those graduating from high school, if you go back 50 years ago, people were drafted right out of high school and went and served. Mm -hmm. And Edward didn't come back. And that's the reality of war. Luckily, we have an all-volunteer force, which we have someone who works part-time for that in the Army Reserves. Um, but it's important to realize that and respect what this 20-year-old must have gone through and what his family has ever dealt with, has dealt with ever since. Edward Zalit was born in Hadley on September 5th, 1923, to Frank and Mary Zalit the third of five children. He attended Hopkins Academy, where he was noted as an excellent athlete, a member of the baseball, basketball, and soccer teams. Just after his 18th birthday, on September 9, 1941, he enlisted in the U.S. Navy and rose quickly through the ranks, achieving the rating of Radio Man Third Class before being accepted as an aviation cadet in July of 1942. After completing his flight training, he received his commission as an ensign and was soon assigned to the USS Cabot as the pilot of a torpedo bomber. On September 18, 1943, as the ship was under, undertook a training cruise prior to the deployment to the Pacific, Ensign Zala took off the aircraft carrier in his Avenger bomber. His aircraft lost power and crashed into the sea killing Zalit 
and his two crewmen. Their remains were never recovered. For his service, he received the American Defense Service Medal and the American Campaign Medal. He was survived by his parents, two brothers, and two sisters. And um, we ask Christine to come up and receive the, I decided not to torture another second name, last name. Next, um, a name that everybody will recognize. Um, Eddie Foreman was born in Hadley on September 10th, 1919, to Frank and Catherine Foreman. He grew up here and was educated in local schools. He worked for a time as a garden laborer prior to his enlistment in the U.S. Navy on September 30th, 1940. After training, he was assigned to the destroyer USS Everill, serving from December 1940 to November 1944, during which time the ship participated in the invasions of North Africa, Italy, and southern France. In November of 1944, he was transferred to the destroyer USS Dexler, Drexler, excuse me, which was preparing for service in the Pacific. On May 28, 1945, Drexler was en route to support U.S. forces in Okinawa when they came under attack from Japanese kamikaze aircraft. After fighting off one and receiving damage from another, a third aircraft struck, causing the Drexler to sink in less than 50 seconds. 168 sailors were killed, including Eddie Foreman. For his sacrifice, he was awarded the Purple Heart. He was survived by his parents and three siblings. We call up Eddie Foreman. <laughs> Christine Newman, the sister as well. Thank you, folks. <laughs> Private Edward Punska, Russell Street, 1921-1943, at the age of 22. He was born January 24, 1921, to John and Anna Punska. He grew up on Russell Street, the youngest of seven siblings. He attended Hadley schools and worked on the family farm until he was drafted. He entered service on September 11, 1942, and was assigned to the 378th Quartermaster Truck Company of the U.S. Army Transportation Corps as a driver. On December 6, 1943, Private Punska died of a wound sustained in a live fire in training accident at Camp Elkins, West Virginia. He was buried with military honors at Holy Rosie, Rosary Cemetery. He was recipient of the American Campaign Medal. He was survived by his parents and his siblings. Nephew Ron Punska, who we met earlier. recipient today. This is the family of Specialist 4, Charles H. Cummings, in North Maple Street, 1951 to 1970. He was age 29. Charles H. Cummings was born April 10th in 1951 in Attleboro, Mass., to Albert and Ruth Cummings. The 
family later relocated to Hadley, where he resided on North Maple Street. He attended Lee High School, Hopkins Academy, Smith School. He enlisted on December 23, 1968, several months before his 18th birthday, after training as a helicopter repairman. He arrived in Vietnam on May 31, 1969, assigned to the 128th Helicopter Company. On March 12, 1970, he was serving as a door gunner on a UH ID Huey out of Phu Lao Airfield. Boy, I went and tortured that. Um, on an infantry extraction mission. On the return trip, they experienced that was believed to be mechanical failure and the aircraft crashed, taking the life of Specialist Cummings. The other crew members and all soldiers they were carrying all passed. For his service, he was awarded the Bronze Star and the Air Medal with 13 oak clo leaf clusters. He was buried in Plainville Cemetery here in Hadley and was survived by his parents and two brothers and two sisters. And receiving it will be his brother, Al Cummings. This year, we are looking to do some more research, and um, maybe next year we'll be able to do this again. Thank you, everybody, for participating and being here, and um, to the families of those gone. They're never forgotten, and the town of Hadley will never forget them either. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And another round of applause for all our Gold Star veterans, please. again to the Hadley Fire Department and the Hadley Police Department under the direction of Chief Spectable and Chief Mason. These banners are going to be all up before the parade, I was promised. Thank you very much. And now it's my honor and privilege to call up Joyce Chung Glow. She'd like a few minutes of your time, but she has assured me she's not running a write-in campaign. This is for something completely separate. <laughs> re-election, so don't write me in, whatever you do. I have other things to do, and I'll be glad to serve on committees, but this here was the best committee of one of the committees that I've served on beside the Ambulance Committee. Um, how better way to go out than to um, get choked up um, in honoring our service people. Um, they're all very near and dear to my heart. I uh, haven't missed a Memorial Day. This will be the first one that I won't be there on that bus going to the cemetery. So um, this has been uh, quite a turnout. I thank you all for coming, and it's just it's just been a great, great thing. Um, thank you to Pam. Uh, if she would come up for a minute, I wanted to honor her. great working with you and you've put in a lot of hard work and I hope people uh, appreciate that. I certainly I do and I know the other committee members do also so thank you very much. Um, one of the other last things that I was able to do um, as a 
select board member was that we are now a Purple Heart town. So. that we have some other younger members in town that uh, served in Iraq and have been injured and I hope that you know we can honor them at a future time and they will um, give us their names and their flags and we can get them up and going for them also but um, that was on August 7th at the Senior Center is going to be the ceremony for the designation of Purple Heart Town. There will be at the entrances to the town stating that Hadley is a, is a Purple Heart town. So, thank you. I have to put the glasses on for this. So, Steve Connor uh, brought with us him today a proclamation from our governor. Um, Whereas, while the nation was still recovering from the Civil War, people in cities and towns across the country gathered to honor the soldiers who had given their lives, celebrating the first Declaration Day. And whereas, after World War I, the nation came together again to honor those who had fallen in the service of their country, renamed Memorial Day. The last day, Monday in May, is when people remember and honor the memory of all men and women who fought and died in all American wars and conflicts. And whereas throughout our country history, thousands of Massachusetts residents have fought in wars and conflicts to defend our safety and way of life. And whereas their legacy of patriotism and dedication to country is an inspiration to all Americans. And whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts residents remember the bravery of those who gave their free, their lives so that their sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. Now, therefore, I, Maura T. Healy, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim May 27th, 2024 to be Memorial Day and urge all residents of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance. Given at the Executive Chamber of Commerce this 27th day of May in the year of 2024 and the independence of the United States of America, the 247th, and that was signed by Governor Healy, Kim Driscoll, and William Francis Galvin. So that's a proclamation from our government. Thanks very much, Joyce. And Pam, we mean it from all of us. You did a great job. We know that you did the lion's share of it. We appreciate the idea from you, and we appreciate your hard work. Thanks very much. Um, uh, uh, obviously, on the banners, when you have 82 of them, there's a couple little glitches on them. We get a little spelling mistake. One of them isn't here today that we are so sorry about. But we're going to fix all that. We hope everybody enjoys the banners uh, very shortly. They're going to be going up. And thanks to all of you that have purchased, bought these banners for honoring your family. <coughs> I'd like now to ask the American Legion Color Guard to please retire the colors. That concludes our ceremony for today, unless, Father, did you have anything else? <laughs> Thank you so much, Father. We very much appreciate it. Thank you for coming, everybody.